Hello again, it is me, Alex from Barefaced, and because I'm talking about guitar cabs, this is called AVD Guitar Cab Prototyping Part Something. Is it four? Is it three? No, it's three or four, or possibly five. I thought I'd hold a bass headstock just to confuse you. Uh, this is a, uh, a Reverend Watt Plower, which uh, legend and barefaced user uh, Mike Watt uh, is behind. Look. That's uh, Pedro, San Pedro, which is a port on uh, the, uh, well, it's, it's sort of a suburb of LA. Um, Chris Novoselic is also from there. Um, but yes, it's got an anchor on, because Watt's dad was in the Navy, which is quite cool. It's a very cool short scale bass. So that's a, an aside. This is about guitar cabs, which is the other thing we do. Um, I don't play guitar, but I'm, I'm one of those bass people, but you know, bassists hang out with guitarists and want to find solutions and the reason I'm holding a bass and waving this early prototype around is because someone said in the last video, well, couldn't you make the angled bits in this, see those bits, the ABD thing, movable so people can change it for sort of what they need. And I was like, well, you could, but this isn't something you want to move because all you're going to do is make it worse. And I thought I'd explain why because it's not like these things. So this bass guitar has some pickups. It's got a reverse, it's got a P bass pickup, which is in basically your P bass position. Some people would call that like the sweet spot because it's where it sounds best, but it doesn't really because other people would look at this bass and say, oh, this has got the pickup in the sweet spot. This is in a different place. This is further back, closer to the bridge. It probably doesn't look as far back as it is because this is a longer scale bass. Um, and then some people, well, you wouldn't, no one else would say it about this, but I can tell you that the pickups on this bass, that's in a 60s jazz bass position, adjusted for it being an extra long 36 inch scale, and that is in a P bass position. None of these are sweet spots. They're just all tonal choices. They're just decisions as to where you want to pick up the sound of the string to get the sound you want with that instrument, with those strings on for your tonal goals. It's not really a sweet spot. Um, people like to use that term, um, you know, sweet spot. I'm sure sweet spot does exist in plenty of other things. I, it's, I'm sure it's a thing in tennis, hitting that point in the middle of the racket where you get the most efficient rebound of the ball off the racket. That surely is a sweet spot, so it must be the same with a golf club. Um, yeah, any of those sort of things. They're sweet spots. The other things are just marketing terms for tonal decisions made by the designers, but this is not like that. I'm not gonna call it a sweet spot, but it is a sweet angle. Well, that's a strange sounding phrase. We need angle to start with. It's, it's awesome angle, that alliterates. People like alliteration in marketing. This is the awesome angle. This is the, I can't think of any other words that start with A, but excellent angle. Yeah, it's an excellent angle. This is no accident. This is not an accidental angle. This angle is the angle that gets us the mids sounding how we want and gets us the dispersion doing what we want. Trust me, you make this narrower and it quite rapidly starts honking. So that means that you're getting too much gain in the mids and too much resin. So it's not just that it's changing the frequency response, but it's also changing the transient response. So you don't want to mess with that angle. Also, if you narrow that angle, you're going to make the effective port length longer here. So more air mass is going to act as a unit doing its resonant Helmholtz thing. Um, so then that's going to change the tuning frequency downwards and that might not be where you want it. Um, the other thing we have to deal with with this design is the tuning frequency as I just mentioned. The tuning frequency is determined by the Helmholtz resonance. The Helmholtz resonance is an air mass, I've said this so many times in the last few weeks, on an air spring. The air mass is determined by 
the air that is that basically thinks it's in the port. Obviously, it's not. It's inanimate. It's not thinking, but it, it's the air mass that is acting as though it is within this slot. It isn't a clearly defined slot port like on that bass cab that I can't pick up because it's got a bass guitar leaning against it. Actually, I'll do that anyway. Hang on. Stay there. What power? There we go. You see, it's really obvious with this that you've got these port segments, and if you look inside, that is the port shelf. The rest of it is the rest of the cab, but you can see the port shelf is the unpainted bit there. So that is the length of the port. On this, it's about 12 inches long, something like that. Yeah, 12 inches or so long. The effective length of the port will be slightly longer because you've got a bit of air in front of the port that kind of gets dragged with that air mass. And there's quite a bit more air gets dragged on the inside because you've got an outer layer that's sort of increasing. If you lay this cab flat on the floor, then that would act as an outer layer, which would extend the port, but this cab is meant to go vertical, so you'll only get a very small extension at the bottom, and you won't really, because the bottom edge is thicker, and it's standing on tall feet that lift it off the floor, so it won't. But you've got an air mass inside the port, got an air mass in here, just like you have the, an air mass in that kind of sound holding guitar, and that resonates. The stiffness of the air spring, so obviously increasing mass, decreases resonant frequency. That should be no massive surprise. I think that's quite intuitive that something heavier, like a heavier string, will resonate more slowly, you know, at a given, with, with a given spring rate affecting it. So that's like your spring tension, string tension. So air mass here are stiffness of the air spring. So the stiffness or the compliance, which is the inverse of stiffness of the air spring, is essentially this area here, so the bigger that area, the more of the internal air is pushing on it, so the greater the stiffness. Now obviously the bigger that area, the more the air mass. So the increasing air mass drives the resonant frequency down, but the decreasing compliance, the increasing stiffness of the air spring from the increased area drives the resonant frequency up. So they don't cancel, but they do interact in a slightly complicated way. The other thing that determines the stiffness of the spring, the air spring, is how big the cabinet is. So if you make the cabinet bigger, you are softening the air spring. That should be fairly intuitive, that if, you've, if you're trying to, say you've got a syringe, right? If you've got a syringe this big and you try to squish it, you seal one end and then you try to squish it, inwards by say a centimeter, yeah? That will have a certain amount of resistance. Now take your finger off, half the syringe, put your finger on again to stop it, squish it again. To squish it the same amount will take more effort because you're compressing a greater proportion of the air. And that is what's happening with the air spring thing here. So you've got this juggling act. We make this cab bigger and we drop the resonant frequency of it. We make it smaller, we raise the resonant frequency. So this is why you don't want to be messing with that gap or because if you mess with the size of that gap you're going to mess with the tuning frequency but you can't adjust the tuning frequency to be where you want by changing the size of the cab so you can't just change the size of the cab so yeah you could hinge those panels but when you move things depending on where you put the hinge you're going to affect the tuning frequency and you're also going to affect the mid-range resonances here. The other thing that's happening with these angled panels, because the sound is being diffracted as it goes through the slot, so the, the, the not the low frequencies, but the higher frequencies go, go through this slot and they are bent. So it's waveform bending is what's going on here. Then this can guide the sound outwards. And what we're trying to do is spread the sound laterally round the room. And if you make that a lot wider, it actually doesn't help. It makes it worse at spreading the sound around the room because you're not getting these panels kind of reflecting the sound. If you make it narrower, they start to actually narrow the disturbs dispersion pattern as well as causing this extra gain in the mid-range and causing the honking, which we don't want. We want it to sound as consistent as possible. So we ended up with an angle and a gap the other thing that happens with this gap, you make this gap too narrow and it acts as an acoustic 
low pass filter and cuts off your highs which is completely defeating the object of the AVD because we're not trying to make a ported cab. There are ported guitar cabs out there. They do the thing they do. They don't solve the problem we're trying to solve and they interact with the room in a way that is possibly more problem problematic than a closed back cab, let alone an open back cab, which tend to interact with rooms in much better ways, but have this issue with not wanting to do big, fat, chunky sounds unless you know, you've know got tons of them to make up for the, uh, the lack of lows due to the, the front and back output cancelling at low frequencies. So yeah, this angled thing is not something you want to mess with. This is why the, the patent documents are quite precise about this. Obviously the challenge with the subsequent cabs has been to see what happens when you scale up. Um, we haven't scaled down, this is our smallest one at the moment, this is the, the 10 inch cab. Um, generally in audio it is easier to scale up than scale down because sound waves are quite big things and air is quite squishy, so bigger stuff tends to work better in sound than small stuff, which is why all the best speakers in the world are bloody massive. Um, yeah. I could also say the same about this is why bass guitars are better than real guitars. Real guitars? Small, small guitars, skinny string guitars, but no. We know they're different animals for different things and we enjoy them all equally or not, as the case may be. So there we are. That was a bit quicker than some of these. Well, not really. 11 minutes. And at least the fire alarm didn't go off this time. So thank you. That's me done for now. I'm Alex from Barefaced and I like talking at cameras it seems. Um, the nice thing is some people actually watch this. So I'm not just standing here talking like somebody who's feeling lonely. Um, thank you. Um, buy our stuff and if you don't want to buy our stuff, do tell us why. I'd like to know why. And if you do want to buy our stuff but don't have the money for it now, well, save up because it's nothing we make is cheap but nothing is totally unaffordable in the long term. I would hope for a fair chunk of people on this planet um, who, yeah, 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 that's a thought. Let's, let's don't think too much or life gets really, really hard. So there's my thought for the day. Uh, I've been Alex from Barefaced. I will see you next time, hopefully.